Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. This is your course instructor Shiza Ayas for the subject of environmental biology in the Department of Botany, Division of Science and Technology, University of Education, Township, Lahore. The topic for present discussion is sediment pollution as most of the introduction has already been discussed in the lecture 10. Now, the cause, the major cause by which the sediment, sediment pollution is spreading in our ecosystem or the environment by the various factors including fungicides and the pesticides used. So the fungi can be fungicides can be classified on the basis of raw material into the organic fungicides and the inorganic fungicides. So mostly the inorganic fungicides may include sulfur powder, lime sulfur, copper sulfate, mercury chloride, etc. So they do not break down into the environment. Hence, they can persist for the longer period of time in the atmosphere. Class two is called as organic fungicides. They are mostly called as synthetic fungicides that may include triazoles and dithiocarbamate. And they can be easily degraded by means of microbes. Persistence of fungicides in the soil, their accumulation and availability in the soil. As they can, persistence is the rate of breakdown of the fungicide, which depends on the chemical structure of fungicide in terms of its size and the chemical bonding. Whereas the synthetic organic fungicide, they can only be degraded by the biotic as well as abiotic methods or the processes. If we term the biotic, it can be controlled or degraded by the, all types of microbes. And abiotic methods may include hydrolysis, volatilization, oxidation, and photolysis. So there are various effects of fungicides. On the surrounding human health, animal, including the floor health, a few consequences are given as underneath. The first toxic effect that comes is called as environmental toxicology. It is a multidisciplinary study of the effects of the man-made and the natural chemicals on the health and the environment. And this includes the study of the effects of the chemicals on the organisms in their natural environment and in the ecosystem which they belong. The presence and determination of fungicide in the agricultural soil can purpose, purposely adverse consequences to the soil organisms together with the earthworm microbes and the critical capabilities these organisms are chargeable for example the breakdown of organic matter facilitating nutrient cycling therefore any poor impression caused by these fungicide residues will have length lasting influences on the fertility and the fitness of agricultural soils Ecotoxicological effects of to the terrestrial organisms. There has been posted describing the consequences of copper to the soil organism. This toxicity effect is pronounced for over 15 specific microinvertebrate species with a lot of regards associated with the composted worms. Most of the people of ecotoxicological effects for the soil microbes describe the antagonistic effect due to these microbial biomass and the indicator of microbial activity. Basically, in terms of nitrification and breathing processes. Therefore, 
the reproduction in terms like um, earthworm biomass decreases due to the high accumulation of copper based fungicides. For example, copper oxychloride spray may help to retard the growth, reproduction, and the nitrification. And these all effects are due to the copper rich soils. Then, ecotoxological effects of these fungicides on the aquatic organisms. As the fungicides are composed of the mixtures of heavy metals like copper, zinc, mercury, etc., those chemicals have detrimental effect on the aquatic existence of the organisms. Many corporations of organisms consisting of aquatic animals like fishes and so forth are badly tormented by those chemical substances which ultimately leads towards the disturbance of the meals chain in terms of food chain. So the fish and other invertebrates are highly affected and these effects are due to the organic fungicides like triazoles and diethylcarbamate, which are less toxic to the aquatic life. As well as there are primidine captains are more readily toxic and fluzinam and the carbon, carbon desamine are highly toxic fungicides. And they may have serious effects on plants and the human life, so on. So how we can control these fungicidal effects or the fungicide pollution? We should try to use less fungicide and rely on the biological method of killing the fungi to protect our crops from these fungus attacks. While applying fungicides, try to cover the face properly in order to avoid any dangerous chemical. We should use all the organic manure rather than these fungicides. And we should use environmentally friendly fungicides which are safe up to their permissible limits. So the excess of everything is bad, so avoid excessive use of all these fungicides. Another content under this category of sediment pollution is called pesticides. There are the substances which are mean to control the pests, including weeds. The term pesticides, including herbicide, insecticides, which may include insect growth regulator, thermicides, nematicides, avicides, rodenticides, etc. The most common of these are herbicides which account for approximately 80% of all the pesticide use. Mostly, the pesticides are intended to serve as a plant protection products, also known as crop protection products, which in general protect the plants from the weeds, fungi, or insects. So, it is a mixture of the substances which are used to kill repel or control a pest, including insect, rodents, bacteria, and a huge variety of microbe and the weeds. So pesticide is a substance or a mixture of the substance that is intended for preventing, destroying, repelling, by lessening the damage which is caused by these pests. Here you can see the pesticidal spray, pesticide spray in the agricultural crops. So a pesticide can be an insect, it can be a plant pathogen, it can also be the bacteria, bird or the weed, and these birds that can compete with a human for the food destroy their property and spread various diseases. Pesticide can be a chemical, a biological agent, antimicrobial and disinfectant, and various chemicals are also poisonous to the humans and animals. 
Here you can see the pesticides in the agriculture in terms of to control the pests. So there are many types of pests, including animal pests and the plant pests. Including animal pests can be divided into the rodents and insects, which are further subdivided into the two classes, biting insect and the sucking insects. If we see the plant pests, they can be further subdivided into the weeds, microbes, and the fungi. So insects, in case of animal insects, there are more than one million species of these insects overall present in the worldwide. Out of these, 10,000 species are responsible for crop eating. And out of these 10,000, only 700 species can cause the epidemic loss to the medicinal plant and various agricultural crops. And these are majorly divided into two subgroups, including biting insect and sucking insect that can create what is negatively impacted over agricultural crops. Plant pests is another category of these pests, including mostly the microorganisms like bacteria, fungi, and the viruses, weeds, and microbes. If we talk about the microbes, the bacteria like the xanthomonas, it causing leaf spots. And in fungi, the spores when come in contact, they can cause a rhinitis, and if they inhale, they cause diseases of hay fever and asthma. So wheat, we can say that it is any undesirable plant in the cultivated plant species. Like you, here you can see the growing weeds inside the particular plants. They can consume the mineral water fertilizer which is given to the crops to inhibit their growth. And they can also be severely damaging to the crops and the effect can be the toxic or lethal. For example, the spores of agrostema contain cyanophore glycoside, which upon hydrolysis littered various toxic hydrocarbons in our ecosystem. So there are various types of the pesticide like fungicides, algicides, insecticides, bactericides, herbicides, and rodenticides. So herbicides, as the name indicate, that are used to kill the weeds, that is unwanted plant. The examples can be seen, nitrophen and the borax. Insecticides are used to kill the insects, for example, DDT. Rodenticides are used to kill the rodents like warfarin, zinc phosphide. Nematicides are used to kill the nematodes like ferret, BB, CP, molluscicide, as the name indicate, molluscs ko kill karne ke liye use kiye jate hain, like the sodium pentachlori definite. Fungicide used to kill the fungus like Borreas mixture. Algae side used to kill algae, copper sulfate, endothelial. Bactericide are used to kill bacteria, for example, uh, dichlorophen and the oxolinic acid. Pesticide are used to kill the fishes, for example, trifluoromethyl nitrophenol, TFM. So there are different types of chemicals which are used under these categories in order to control various types of pesticides, including insecticides, fungicides, rodenticides, fumigants in terms of aluminum, zinc phosphide, methyl bromide, methyl dibromide, insect repellents, and the herbicides in terms of chemical spray. So we can say that according to one estimate and the research finding, each year in Pakistan, about 45,000 tons of the pesticides are mostly used. And there are approximately about 2,500 commercial products of these pesticides in the, which are available commercially.
and the use of these pesticides is increasing at the rate of 25 percent per year so increasing demand of these pesticides day by day can harm our atmosphere in terms of producing the chemicals by creating this type of sedimentation pollution and these are all available marketed products of these fungicides in order to control various diseases of pest insect fungicide herbicides rodenticide etc so along beside various negative impacts of these pesticides they may have various ben they are beneficial for example over 70% of the pesticides are used in the developed country countries in the form of agribusiness because this saves the life like ddt that is ddt is called as 24 dichlorodiphenyl trichloroethane which is colorless tasteless and almost odorless crystalline chemical compound and it is uh, originally developed as an insecticide organochlorine it can be used against the malarial mosquitoes plague rat fleas typhus body lice fleas slipping sickness etc so they can also destroy approximately 40 percent of the food crops per year that cost approximately 65 million dollars in a year that is they also increase the crop quality and quantity by using the invasive in invasive species control procedures and uh, they work faster than the alternative such as biological and physical control methods are very essential in order to control these types of most common pesticide including insecticides herbicides and the fungicides so there are, are many harmful effects if we saw if we look upon the human health then they may develop the cancer uh endocrine complications infertility sterility brain damage birth defects respiratory order organ failure and in the last skin irritation can be uh affected by the use of these chemicals they may have various ecological effect like bioconservation for example they uh, pesticides are included in a broad range of organic micropollutants that have ecological impacts different type of pesticides pesticides have different type of effect on the living organisms although residual impacts by these pesticides do occur the principal pathway that causes ecological impact is that of the water contaminated by the pesticide runoff. There are the two principal mechanisms which are called as bioconcentration and biomagnification. So first one is the bioconcentration. That is the movement of a chemical from the surrounding medium into an organism. That is the concentration of the chemical uh, from the outside to the inside of organism will be increased by this process of bioconcentration and the primary thing for this is mainly the fatty tissues some pesticides such as ddt are lipophilic lipophilic that is they they have tendency to combine or dissolve with the lipids or the fats so they are soluble or they can accumulate in the fatty, uh, fatty tissues such as edible fish tissue or the human fat tissue. Other pesticides like glycophosate are metabolized easily and they can be excreted easily. Second example is called as magnification. Magnification also known as bioamplification or the biological magnification is any concentration of a toxin such as a pesticide in the tissue of the tolerant organisms at successively higher level in the food chain. The best example can be seen in terms of top predator like fish, also human beings. So the ecological effect of these pesticides are varied and they are often interrelated. The effect 
at the ecological level are usually considered to be at an early warming indicator. So the role of uh, pesticide in the sedimented pollution that these pesticides are used to protect various crops from the insect and bacterial attack which can retard the plant growth when these chemicals are mixed up with the water they are again harmful for the human being as well as for the aquatic life so in the rains these chemicals mixed up with the rain water and flow down into the rivers and the canals causing serious damages for the aquatic animals beside these there are various properties of these pesticides like Mm, pesticide with a very high vapor pressure are more likely to change to a gas or escape in, into a to, into the atmosphere in terms of the gas. Absorption or their adsorption process, that is attraction of the soil surfaces, pesticides uh, with all the high absorption values have reduced leaching properties. They are water soluble their water solubility more soluble pesticides have lower absorption rates and therefore they are more mobile in the environment as they leach down or move with the run of water they are also said to be persistent that is the amount of time a pesticide remains in the environment measured by the half-life pesticides with the longer half-lives poses a great threat to the environment so how can we reduce the sediment pollutions? If we do not spray during the windy conditions or we use a spot treatment where the pest is most prevalent. So applying the pesticide during a windy condition or a temperature inversion can result in damaging long distance drift so use caution when spraying at the wind speed should be less than three milli per as the temperature inversion could exist. Use drift retardants when appropriate and there are many good products on the market used for this purpose. Use par treatments where the pest is most prevalent. Avoid widespread application of the pesticide throughout the garden or the home. For the spot treatments, mix the pesticide according to the label instructions and apply these mixtures only to the affected area. Avoid applying the chemical just before irrigation or rainy weather. So there are various precautionary measures or there are various methods or the alternative to use these chemical pesticides like natural pesticides available in the market such as bt that is a soil microbe toxic to certain insect milky spore or my also called as a microbe nicotine that is extracted as a tea from the bulk tobacco plants Pyrethrum, that is derived from a variety of daisy flowers, and the iron phosphate, which is a natural mineral toxic to the slugs and the snail. These are all above natural pesticides. Biological, uh, they may also including cloves, eucalyptus, orange, cinnamon, and with a huge variety of organic pesticides can be used in mixture in order to prevent the attack of these pests. Biological pest controls, they use the predator to get rid of the pest instead of using the chemical pesticides. It is a method of controlling the pests such as insect, mite, weeds, and plant diseases using other organisms. It basically relies on the predation, parasitism, herbivory, or other natural mechanism, but it typically also involves an active human management role. Plant genetic engineering is an, another alternative method in order to control the pest. For example, to produce a GM plant that is a genetically modified plant, a new DNA should be transferred into the plant cell. 
So the genetic modification of plants involve adding a specific stretch of DNA into the plant's genome, giving it new or the different characteristics. And this could include changing the way of the plant grows or making it resistant to the particular disease. There should be some release of the organism that can fight against these pests, these pests including various uh, Various organisms of a huge variety of the microbes can also play a very important role that can fight against these pests. Insect breedings can also be interfered by using various methodologies and then the soil streaming is the farming technique that sterilizes the soil with the steam in the open field or the greenhouses. Pests of the plant culture such as weeds, bacteria, fungi, viruses, are culled through induced hot stream, which causes the vital cellular proteins to unfold. Biologically, the method is considered as a partial disinfection. Important heat resistant, spore forming bacteria can survive and revitalize the soil after cooling down. So in this way, the soil fatigue can be cured through the release of the nutritive substances which is blocked within the soil. And this streaming leads to the better starting position, quicker growth, strengthen the resistance against these plant diseases and the pest. So today, the application of the hot steam is considered the best and the most effective way to disinfect the sick soil potting soil and the composting. So this was all about uh, the present lecture. The remaining part, including herbicides, major sources of soil pollution, their impact and the control measure will be discussed in the remaining other lectures. And this is the, these are all the references which I have quoted to prepare the outlines of sediment pollution. Here are some web links that I browse in order to prepare this lecture. Thank you very much for listening.